Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You look like a monkey and smell like one too. Welcome to the vlog. Oh. Hey, what are you doing? How are you doing? Hey friends. So this is just a little update, little vlog video. Um, yeah. It's the 29th of September. Rollins and I are back at Severn Dam for, I don't know, a couple weeks, 16 days, somewhere around there. And, uh, yeah, I decided to do a little video about my best friend because tomorrow is his birthday. He's going to be five. For those of you who don't know or haven't watched the channel all that much, Rollins is my dog. He's a rescue. He came from Lumberton, Texas through a rescue named Anna's Angels. And Anna is the owner proprietor of this rescue and she does amazing work. Amazing work. So a little background on Rollins. It was basically 2018. I was recently single and I had this trailer and truck and more room than I needed and my sister and my niece, hello Sunshine and Emma, decided to start putting the bug in my ear. Well, you should get a dog. You should adopt a dog. You should get a dog. Why don't you get a dog for, you know, the road and that kind of thing. And um, to be honest, I actually kind of resisted. Um, I didn't, wasn't sure if I was ready. And part of the reason, ironically enough, is I wasn't 100% sure I was ready and willing to follow a dog around with a baggie and pick up his poop. If you've been watching me since, you know I am a staunch advocate of cleaning up after your pet. Um, there is not many places where I won't pick up after him. Um, if we're out in the forest or the wilderness or he's walking along the side of a road in a ditch and it's tall grass and he decides to go, that's fine. If we're anywhere near a path where people are walking, if we're in a campground, anything like that, I pick up after him. So that was kind of like a deciding factor for me. I just, uh, for the longest time, I wasn't really ready to even willing to do that. Um, but then I started looking. So I started looking at the rescues um, in around New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, where my sister lived. And I found a couple there. I think one's called Hearts of the North. And they were actually posting pictures on their Facebook page of various dogs. But then when you went to their website to see about adopting them, they didn't have any dogs there. I'm like, well, how does this work? What's going on here? So I dug a little deeper. And basically what they were doing is they were partnered with Anna's Angels Dog Rescue in Texas. And Anna's Angels had a transport van that came up twice a month at that time might even be more now, loaded with dogs that were adopted <laughs> through their partnership with Hearts of the North. And they were bringing the dogs up, like basically two loads at a time uh, every month. And I'm like, okay. So I started looking through and I found a picture and I'm gonna post that picture here because I do still have it. I saved it. Um, and this is basically before I got him. This is like his, I don't know, his profile pic to possibly get adopted and um, I don't know there's just something about it <laughs> I'm gonna get all messy I don't want to get all messy anyways there's just something about it and uh, I'm like okay well, he's kind of cute whatever and I reached out to um, one of Anna's volunteers Cameron and started asking her some questions about like dogs that they had that would suit my lifestyle told her what I was doing that kind of thing and you know I pointed out like well what about this dog what about that dog and there was probably I don't know three or four maybe different dogs that they currently had on the roster for adoption and she said well this one could work and this one's a little older and he might be you know a little less active or whatever and this and that and um to be honest I wasn't you know picky about breed. I just wanted to find the right one, the right fit. 
But for some reason, I just kept going back to Rollins' pitcher. And back then, they named him Skipper. His, his name on his, like, I mean, I found out later that the, the guy that ran the shelter named him Clyde. Then they basically fostered him, and they named him Skipper. And, like, you know, who knows what his real name is. Um, but then once I got him, uh, we decided, to, okay, well, we're going to name him Rollins, and that's what he's used to. So after that, I kept going back to his pitcher, kept going back to his pitcher, and uh, yeah, I decided, okay, well, he's the one. So we went and through the process, did the paperwork. And shortly after that, he was scheduled for the next transfer up from Texas to Nova Scotia. Um, they actually take him right to the border in New Brunswick. So it was about a three hour, three and a half hour drive. And their estimated time to get there was midnight. And me and my niece, Emma, decided to hop in the truck and go and pick him up. So... We did the drive, um, actually went to the wrong border crossing because uh, I'm not really from the area. I didn't really know that there was like two and there's like a smaller one that we went to first. And then it's like, no, 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 we're at the big main one. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we were a little late getting there and the transport lady uh, was there and he was the last dog to be picked up. And she was just standing there and he was sitting on a leash being a good boy. And uh, we walked up and, you know, said hello and that kind of thing. And Emma stayed with him while I went in because you have to go in and kind of sign the papers over. I'm not even remember what it was. But I had to go into the office and kind of, you know, say that I'm accepting this dog, that kind of thing. So I went in to do the paperwork and Emma was with him. And basically we came back. You know, the transport lady was on her way back, back down south. And Emma and I... And Sir Rollins got in the truck and he basically was in his little back seat and put his head on the console and let Emma pet him. And ever since then, he's just been perfect. He's been perfect. I talked to the foster lady, Cindy, who fostered him. And thankfully, she fostered him because she had a rule where... She already had three dogs of her own and she decided that they would foster one dog at a time and she broke her own rule, like basically the first, I think it was the first year she was fostering, um, broke her own rule and accepted him because he literally was an hour away from being put down. And the guy at the shelter goes, I got more dogs than I can handle. Um, some of these ones that have been here a while have to go. So they either get fostered, adopted, or I have to put them down. And Cindy and Tristan broke their rule, took them in, and a couple months later I found them. So yeah, he's over here. That's why I keep looking that way. So yeah, it was one of those things where it's like, um, thankfully, they took him in because, like I said, He's been perfect. Um, I was talking to Cindy when he was on his way up, if there's anything that I should know. Um, I had to learn about, you know, possibly effects of changing his food because I couldn't get the food that they were on um, down there up in Canada. So I got him a can of pumpkin and that kind of thing. And basically from day one, we got in, got in the trailer. Um, he had some of his food with his pumpkin and I... No word of a lie, he has never had an accident. He has never chewed on anything that he's not supposed to. He's never been aggressive with me or out of line. Uh, we get roughhousing and playing and he'll he'll bite my hands, but not really kind of thing. Like, you know, he, he knows we're playing. Um, and if I'm not in the mood and he wants to play and he kind of like bites my hands, I'll say no hands and he'll stop. On rainy days, we were playing ball in the trailer, um, just kind of like up. <laughs> I'd sit in, sit on the kitchen floor at the back and throw the ball like up on the bed, and he'd like run back and forth and that kind of thing, um, just to kind of burn some energy off. And one day, I had a bottle of water sitting on my little nightstand behind the beside the bed there, and the ball went kind of behind the nightstand, and he went running up there like you know, because he's you know still a year old at this time, so he's still pretty much a puppy, but he went running up there. Noticed that the ball was like 
behind the nightstand, but my bottle of water was there. And he very, very gently and very carefully went around the bottle of water, picked up the ball very gently, brought it back out to where it was kind of, you know, safe to get crazy again, and then came barreling down and like, you know, resumed playing. And I'm like, where the hell did you learn that? Like he just knew, oh, this is dad's stuff, I gotta be careful. And it's been like that from day one. I mean, the very first time I left him on his own in the truck, I was like, okay, here's the, here's the test. I had to go to Walmart. It was a day like this. It wasn't very warm or, you know, too hot or anything like that. So went in to get some groceries and left him in the truck. And on my way back, I just had a couple bags. So as I kind of walked up very quietly and peered in the truck and he was in his back seat, laying on his little blanket calm, relaxed, just chilling out. And he's been like that ever since. And it's been four years. And to be honest, it doesn't feel like four years. Like it just seriously does not feel like it's been four years, but yeah, pretty much 24 seven, four years. Okay, I'm gonna pan, show you him over here. Are you listening to me talk about you? Yeah? You're going to be five tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I decided to make a little video kind of commemorating his fifth birthday. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Fill you in a little bit, you know, like kind of tell you about our life together. And, um, yeah, there isn't one thing I would change. He's... Very smart, very independent, very patient. He's got a dad who's a creative, neurotic mess most of the time. And um, yeah, he just gets me. To the point, here's a, here's a little story. This is just the other day. So we're in uh, Coaldale. And I decided, okay, I'm going to go shoot some pictures. You know, just take the truck and my still camera and go out and try and find some, some photos to take. And uh, so it was a warm day, not real hot. Um, and I thought, okay, well, I'll bring him along. Because, I mean, if I happen to hop out to take a picture of an old farmhouse or something, he's okay for a few minutes in the truck. And then we can, you know, if there's somewhere where we can both explore, then he can, you know, run around and that kind of thing. Um, I have done it kind of probably about a 50-50 basis like that where it's like some days I'll go out on my own and I'll leave him in the trailer um, and then some days I'll take him with me and you know he always seems bored in the truck <laughs> he doesn't really you know he's not one of these dogs with his head out the window exploring and stuff it's like as soon as we start driving he just climbs in the back and kind of chills out and has a nap so that's why sometimes I'm quite okay leaving him you know in the trailer because he's just gonna nap anyways he might as well nap comfortably you know in front of the fan or you know on the bed and have his food and water and everything he needs. But this day, so a few days ago, I decided, okay, well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take him. So I opened the door and I said, you know, go in the truck. But he saw me, you know, grabbing my camera and getting my camera ready and all that kind of stuff. And he went to the door and then he's like, no. And I'm like, oh, well, you gotta pee first. So we went for a little walk first kind of thing. And he had a pee and then we come back and the truck door is still open. I'm like, hey, let's go. And he just kind of looks at me and he turns around and he goes and he stands by the steps of the trailer. He just stands there and says, let me in. I'm going in here. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you don't want to go in the truck? And he's like, just looking at me. Standing by the steps, looking at me. I open the door, he goes inside, turns around, I gave him some scratches and uh, a little bit of loving and uh, closed the door and I went and did my thing and he did his thing. It's like, like no separation anxiety, no whatever. Of course he's excited to see me when I get back. We go for a walk and he, you know, does his thing and that kind of thing. But I don't know. He's just, he's way smarter than I give him credit for. Like he's just, he knows. He's a damn good dog. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to uh, 
show you a few uh, clips and some pictures of our past four years together. And then, uh, yeah, if you want to uh, wish Rollins a happy birthday, I'll share the love. He'll get scratches all around. He always, he's spoiled rotten. Like he's, he's got his rubber pig <laughs> that I fill with treats. And it's almost like twice a day now where he's just like throwing this pig around and just getting fat. You getting fatter? You getting fat like dad? No? Yeah. Anyways, here's a little tribute to my buddy on his fifth birthday. And that, we call it his birthday because basically September 30th is the day that we picked him up. And they said, well, he's about a year old. So nobody really knows the exact day, but we made September 30th Rollins' day.
Thank you.